morning, everyone. Welcome to National Opera Studio Open Morning. Uh, we're going to do various sessions here in the Blackburn Hall, uh, coaching, speaking, watch, and also uh, a panel discussion uh, and a question and answer session. So hopefully you'll have a chance to find out uh, anything you want to know about what we do here at the studio. We're going to start with some coaching. I'm Andrew Griffith, the head coach here. Uh, this is Georgia May Ellis, Metro Soprano, and Johanna Pham at the piano. Um, Georgia, could you tell us a little bit what, what you're going to sing for us this morning? Yeah, so this morning I'm going to be singing an aria from Mozart's opera La Clemente di Tito. And my character, this dog, is uh, a friend of Tito. And Tito is uh, the emperor of Rome at this point in time. And uh, Vitalia, who is Sexto, is very much in love with, uh, wants to claim the throne back from Tito. And she asks Sexto to actually try and kill um, Tito. So at this point in the opera, uh, Sexto has tried to kill Tito, but uh, wasn't successful and is now imprisoned. And this is kind of his last aria for Tito to forgive him. Thank you. 
love to talk about finding some more colours. Yeah. And how we sort of shift the focus, because some of it is really to Tito, isn't it? And a lot of it, when you're trying to have fun, or sure. is really for yourself, at least at the beginning. Okay. So, so what are you saying exactly there? Tanto, so much suffering, I cannot believe my heart could bear, basically, isn't mm -hmm. it? So I've yeah, no already bad. lost my score. <laughs> That's all right. Yeah. Which officially is an aside. Tanto, have fun. I can't believe my, my heart could be torn in two in this way. Mm -hmm. But I do wonder, by the end, whether you, whether you just go, what the hell, and if everyone can hear it, I've got nothing to lose. Yeah, exactly. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, should we go back to the beginning? Yeah. What do we... Does Sesto know that he has six or seven minutes to make an appeal to Tito? Um, I think he, there's pressure to get this right, definitely. definitely. And not, I don't know if he ever thought he would have this chance to, to say something. I think to even have, be listened to by Tito. I think it might be an interesting idea that basically every time you say a sentence, it might be the last one, and then you're bundled off. Sure, 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 yeah. Okay. That actually there's a sort of sense of urgency that you don't have that feeling, okay, I'm going to set out in logical yeah. paragraphs my <laughs> argument over eight phrases, that each one might be the last one. And I think it's, this is, I mean, it's kind of Mozart's fault. It's so unbelievably beautiful, and it's easy for it to kind of go, and we hear this beautiful melody. Yeah. But somehow, I think, if you can play against that with the urgency of the situation, yeah. it might just be a little bit more kind of, we want to feel that the stakes are really, really high, basically. Yeah, yeah. Just to try a bit at the beginning. Just a, a couple of bars, Johanna, maybe. Remember our very first love. You do primo amor. Then I go, okay, what's next? Okay. Uh, what does day mean? Oh. Nothing at all, exactly. Okay. There's a, you can't even speak, you can't even begin. Da, da, da. Day, it's just, uh. okay. So yeah. this guy who's been like your friend from childhood or something, right? I mean, yeah. they were really close to you to Ancesto, and then you do this stupid thing and try and kill him, and then you feel terrible about it, and now this is tearing you in half. Mm -hmm. uh, Good, even the same on Questo Istanto Solo. Just, just for this one, this one moment. Yeah. Questo Istante Solo. So see if you can feel it even more as a single yeah. phrase. It's so easy to go, Questo Istante, and make yeah. everything beautiful, and somehow all those little yeah. um, pearls need to add up to a bigger yeah. thing. Once more. It's a bit il tuo, yeah. il tuo rigo. You think the beginning was miles better? Yeah. It just kind of holds the interest. Did you think it was better? It <laughs> just kind of keeps us, yeah. uh, keeps us interested. Let's go from Che Moria, shall we? Mm -hmm. And I would think you could make even more of the zdenio on the rigo. Il tuo zdenio, this zde is so beautiful. Yeah. Il tuo zdenio, hey, you. And the rigor needs to make Johanna sit up and go, ta da 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 so that you really kind of motivate. So all these things in the orchestra come from you in the ear. Yeah. Yeah. Almost yeah. as if you're kind of stamping your foot. Welcome. Yeah. Uh, let's go from da 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 
heel's actually a little bit strong. If you're ill, it's hard. Yeah. Well, yeah. Ill then yeah. you can go for that. Yeah. I could take more of more. Maybe yeah. there's a hint of more M than you're going. Yeah. Once more. <laughs> think when the orchestra stops like that, it always denyo, it should be because the character has done something so yeah. um, rhetorical that everyone goes, Ooh. <laughs> it always denyo. And if you do that, then the time's your own, actually. Yes. I'm not yeah. saying you should take space, yeah, yeah, but it shouldn't yeah. just feel in your head that you're going, yeah. il to denyo. Il to it's like you're really taking the power. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's go from the first one. Il to denyo. One thing I love about this art is how much silence there is in it. Yeah. Like, all, look, so much of the most eloquent stuff is when you don't sing. Yes. Uh, and I think it's really worth thinking about how you use it. I'm sure you have thought about this already. These, these poor Saresti Mensaveda, wh why are they not joined up, do you think? Why does Mozart write it with rests between everything? I think there's hesitancy because it's more vulnerable and yeah. more, you know, pleading in that sense. So it's more kind of like that. That yeah, can be that. Can also be that you're unable, yeah. maybe, to join them up. Poor Saresti, men severo. For me, they feel a bit too nicely finished. Poor Saresti, men severo. I mean, partly I just think the, the, the weak syllable maybe is too long. Okay. But also that feeling of, of being unable to sing a legato phrase, even if you want to, yeah. can be quite moving. Poor Saresti. Men severo. And it's always then Johanna that has to kind of prompt. Por sales tanta men severo. Yes, yeah. And then maybe there's a place. I mean, I, I'm sure you're singing them longer because you're thinking I've got to think of a sentence. Okay. And that's a really good reason. And maybe then the place where that happens is when it starts to be chromatic. Sure. Da -da 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 when yeah. it starts to make a bit more of a melody. Should we just try from Por sales? You might mm. hate it. And as always, I mean, I say this to everybody, you know, if you, like, stuff works in a coaching do it in the end walk out the door and throw it away if you don't like it that's, <laughs> you know we'll all say different things to you <laughs> And then finally, you get to sing a whole phrase and yeah. you, you manage to do it all in one. Yeah. It's almost, I mean, I'm not saying you should do it like this, but it's almost like all that first stuff has been kind of to, the, to your feet in a way. And then you finally manage to kind of yes, address this to, to at the end. Yeah. Good. And Johanna, we won't do it again, but I would crescendo more. I know Mozart doesn't mark it till 26. But this da 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 it does feel like a real kind of ratcheting up of things. Mm -hmm. 
Good. Should we jump forward? Should we go yeah. to the Allegro, maybe? I wouldn't soften it. I know there's a piano chord, but yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's a big accusation sure. on yourself, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. Good. Yeah. I, there's always a danger with this that we start despair, and then there's nowhere to go. You know? Yes. Desperato yeah. vado a morte. Actually, I would go yeah. all the way to morte. Definitely. Not even desperato, because yeah. that'll happen. Desperato. You can't avoid an accent there. But desperato vado a morte. Yeah. Maybe a place for a double M. Yeah. After a preposition, I think it would be nice. Mm -hmm. Let's do it again. Very good. And then, Johanna, there's a pause, isn't there? Traditor. Because this is the next thing that Sesto says is to himself. So this is the, the kind of junction, isn't it? This is where we go from, I've been saying everything to Tito, to, oh, God, you couldn't believe how unhappy I am this tanto fan non soffro in yeah. Good. Just one thought, which is, il pensiero mi tormento. Those yeah. for me are a bit too, il pensiero yes. mi tormento. Yeah. I start to hear your voice kind of more than your words, if yeah, you do that. Yeah, yeah. Il pensiero mi tormento, che fui te con traditor, and then, then, and then you can join us. Then, Should yeah. we just go from, can we go from my amore, the second phrase of mm -hmm. the Allegro, 44, that is. <laughs> Stressing that. Yeah. Let me see more di dolor. I guess we, we and maybe more if you can more double F on affanno. We can wait. Tanto yeah. affanno soffrio. Like you're being kind of suffocated. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's not. It's not a good thing for singing, is it? Like you're being <laughs> suffocated, but they're, they're being stifled at least. <laughs> uh, give us the run in, Johanna. Another place where I think I would come, sorry, I've been be saying lots of times, keep going to the end. Here I would come away. Lord, okay. I feel so small, I feel so tiny. Yeah. And then, da, 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 and then this is the coming out of that again. Yeah. Let's keep going though, shall we? So from, th from those A's, Johanna? Then sol spirale forte. Absolutely. Yeah. So something I guess should have happened from you to make that happen. Yes. Can you give us? You, can you give us more contrast? Yes. vero. Sol spirale. We, we're going to need something there, aren't we? Yes. And again, be careful of D. I think you caught yourself doing it yeah. on the second one. <laughs> 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 
Pietade. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, same place, Johanna, thank you. your ideal are you taken by surprise by what the orchestra does or do you leave it there they're both valid I think, I think yeah there has to be some sort of self-abandonment because <laughs> I think at this point I kind of imagine that Tito's turned around again and he doesn't really want to Good. see me so it's like okay I'll show you what a proud soldier I am and that I'm not a scared of death but I'm scared of you know that I've betrayed you so it kind of leads into I that. think that's nice. So do you think you might now be saying time to a fan to him rather than to yourself? Yeah, I think so. I think yeah. that's very nice, yeah. yeah. And that idea of imagining resistance from the person that's listening to you is really, really useful, mm -hmm. isn't it? Like yeah. The, why we often have this problem of I've got to say the same thing 20 times. You probably do say it 20 times, yeah. I'm sorry. Like, I have to say it again because they're not listening, because they don't want to hear it, mm. or whatever, whatever it is. That's, mm. that's very, very nice. Um, does that stretch to getting faster, do you think, or not? <laughs> um, do you mean during that section we've just done, or, or as in like it 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 informs the dialogue? Well, I mean, I d I don't I I this is not a leading question particularly. It is possible to make an cello and in the last few bars that gets you to the più allegro, or you ah. can make the più allegro a surprise. Both things are possible. Okay, I think I'd quite like to lead into it, so to kind of start it in a couple of bars. This can work. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's try it then. Yeah. Okay. Uh, where should we start? Maybe, Maybe just ninety six or something. Yeah. yeah. Boom. I don't hear it off of amorte still. Disperato, hovado, amorte. There's almost a sort of petulance about it. There's a, yeah. what the hell then? I'll just go and die. Exactly. Disperato, hovado, yeah. amorte. My morir non mi spaventa. Yeah. That my death doesn't bother me. Yeah. What bothers me is that you hate me and yeah. I've let you down. Yes. So I think just the, you know, the, the, the negatives there, the ma, the non, I think are really yes. important to, to make really tell. Yeah. Let's go from the pure allegro. I like that link. It was good. Yeah. Spaventa. I'm yeah. sure it's possible. I Just uh, so. let's do it again from the, uh, the second phrase. So from uh, where she sings Morte. Good. Would be lovely if it's that easy, but it's all double dotted, isn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think me, me, the spikiness, let it kind of be part of Definitely. that. It, you yes. find a reason for the double dotting. Yes. Good. The ma you could just start it sooner. Mark Elder has this thing. He says, start it in the dressing room. Da da. My yeah. mori. There's loads yeah. of time to do it. Definitely. Should we do this again? Mm -hmm. 
course you don't need to breathe at the end. I almost feel a bit robbed if you don't. Okay. <laughs> di dolor, di dolor. It's a, it's a kind of signing off thing, maybe. Um, what's happening during this long E then? Yeah, there needs to be, I think there's like a realisation that he's willing to go to his death without maybe being forgiven. So, I'd, yeah, I'd like to share that a bit more. Because it's quite a surprise that this da 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 da, da music mm. comes back. You know, usually Mozart, you go from section to section and there's nothing kind of recycled. Sure. And then we get this kind of memory of the middle section, which is quite interesting. Yeah. I keep really on wondering, you, you've been so kind of bold in what you're saying. I'll go to my death, but it's not that, uh, yeah. you know, I, I don't care. It's, it's that I was a traitor to you is what <coughs> I care about. And as you're saying it, you kind of hear this music. It's almost like we hear your thought. You take one try, it's all. This one yeah. feels to me like it maybe does come back into you. Mm -hmm. But this, oh, turn to a fan of softly and call and me more to do the door. And then maybe you could come out again from then. Yeah. yeah. I just wonder if it, if it keeps the kind of the tension of the thing going for longer. Yeah. That we see he's still putting up a front, but actually underneath he's, he's kind of dying inside. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Should we go from Il Pensier or maybe um, one bar before that, Johanna, 112? Watch side, let's get that right. Pensier. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> If you like it, I would keep kind of for yourself. Yes. And then it feels a very natural place to kind of start growing yeah, out. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. I wonder if you could be braver with singing less in this tanto fanno yeah. soffrem core. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. I mean, we are not short of beautiful lyrical singing from you in the Zari. It's fantastic. But occasionally, if it's too much tanto fanno so. Yeah. I almost hear you caring more about your beauty of tone than, than actually yes. about what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. And I know that's not true, but it's kind of how it comes out. Okay. Should we go from the same place? Bop, 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 bop. <laughs> I thought that was very beautiful, this very, the quiet. Did you like it? Mm -hmm. So I think we get the vulnerability of him more because yeah. he's so good at putting up a front. Definitely. Yeah. Going, I'm doing the noble thing, I'll go and die. I, you know, I'd rather, I mean, actually after this, Tito says, off you go then, doesn't he? He says, yeah. go and die then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then he changes his mind. Changes his yeah. mind. Well, I'm just called La Clemenza di Tito, so yeah. we know how it's going to end, I guess. Sure. But <laughs> yeah. Um, how are we doing? I just wonder if we have time just to go back to the beginning very briefly. Yeah. Having, having found that place, should we, ju should we just go back and do the very start yeah. again? Just a couple of bars, maybe, Johanna. Very nice, really. And um, primo amor, sometimes you do slightly primo, yeah. tiny bit, primo yeah. amor. Yeah, yeah. So don't let yourself think about the M until the last possible moment. Yeah. What does il primo amor feel like to Sesto? What does that mean? I mean, you, you presumably, you would, if you said that, in, think about what we had. If you said it to like, if you're breaking up with somebody, you know, yeah. or whatever. It's a whole like, oh, bunch of experience, right? Yeah. I think it's a bigger idea somehow. Yes, yeah. I mean, it's, is it school days together? Is it 
you know, endless nights out on the town? Is it, I yeah. don't know what it is, but yeah. could that be a bigger idea somehow? Yeah, yeah. Um, but what I really liked was this feeling of you were kind of getting up your courage to say anything at all at the beginning, which was really good. Sure. Just one bar, very good. Take a little time. Okay. I know this is a breathing thing, <laughs> but take a risk and see what happens. Yeah. It's, I tell you, I'm, uh, what's so nice about it, you so often come into, and people sing this in auditions a lot, this are obviously, and you do, I know, and the first two phrases you feel, they're just finding their feet, they're making sure the voice is working, you know, actually kind of colour and meaning are quite far down the list of things they worry about. It's like, did I make it in the breath? Thank God, okay, now we can get on and sing the aria. <laughs> and if you make it really kind of clear what you're talking about and the colour of that, actually it really does tell because it doesn't happen very often. Sure, sure. One more time, very good. <laughs> with these well-known hours if you can get us to hear them with with new ears and go okay this is going to be worth listening to let's yeah. see what the journey is going to be sure. but with the first couple of phrases it just makes a huge difference definitely yeah fabulous we've got a couple of minutes until the next coaching so i think yeah. we'll do a changeover now yeah thank you so much okay thank lovely you so thank much. you johanna thanks very johanna. very good oh <laughs> and we need to yeah thank you for that <laughs> okay
if you want to do extra warming up, that's fine, do it. You feel comfortable. <laughs> yeah, okay, sorry. <laughs> I'm a little bit tired. Yeah. It's all good. So um, we've not met before. Um, I'm Rachel Nichols. I'm one of the coaches here. I, I visit. Um, tell everyone who you are, too. Uh, I'm uh, Nicolina Karkac, and I'm soprano from Croatia. Wonderful. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you're going to sing Da Tempeste. Yes. And you're going to sing it all the way through, and then we're going to do some work on it, and then maybe we will look at some lacme if we have time. OK. 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 But this is okay. the first time I have heard you, so I'm very excited. Let's okay. go. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Okay, let's try. <laughs> And what were you not very good at? 
Who's number four? And it's fine to say, I also drink coffee. And then we can work on that one, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, well, actually, I'm a bit tired this morning. I'm feeling a little bit tired. Okay, so we do, well, I don't think any of us heard that, so that's good. Okay. <laughs> so what, what, what were you doing um, in terms of when you're tired? What's your strategy? Uh, well, not to push, just uh, to let it go. Yes. Like, as much as goes out, it, it's okay. And don't be, and uh, I try not to be too ambitious. <laughs> How very, very, very sensible of you. <laughs> at least trying, at least trying, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, you seem to be, you have wonderful control of your instrument. And in general, I think the balance of how much effort you're putting in, in terms of your body, is really, really good. Oh. Sometimes, when you have been singing a lot of the, co uh, uh, a fast, long coloratura passage, mm -hmm. you then sing a lower bit of music and you're using what I would think is a little bit too much breath mm -hmm. for the pitch that you're singing at. And I'm slightly interested in exploring that. That was the mm -hmm. only criticism really that I could find. I was trying to think of mean things to say, but I couldn't think of anything because it was all really, really, really That's good. good. <laughs> was there anything you weren't happy with? Well, it wasn't like um, uh, balanced as I'm used to. Okay. Like I, I do it much more balanced because now it's early a little bit for me. Yeah. <laughs> and and um, it should be maybe more like, I don't know how to describe, it shouldn't be like note plus note plus note. It should, should be Absolutely. like more in like. Absolutely. Yeah. So let's just try and make that a little bit easier. Mm. <laughs> focused isn't it why is that it's more pressure i think I, i'm having this feeling of pressure because here there's a lot of pressure here mm -hmm. creates a valve at the front of the mouth mm. that exerts back pressure on your vocal folds and because of something to do with physics called the bernoulli effect it makes the vocal folds meet together with better closure ah, okay. which means that you are making more sound because you have better contact which means you are working less hard. And you know the phrase in English, a vicious circle, when things go, go worse and worse and worse and worse. So what, normally, when I say, what would you do if, if, if you're tired? And people say to me, I would support more. And I go, so you mean you'd use more air then? And they go, yes. And I go, right, so your vocal folds don't want to meet together, so you're going to put more air through them, and then they will find it harder to meet. And, and it gets worse and worse and worse. This makes it go better and better and better because the sound is more concentrated. So you go, OK, I'm making a good sound. So you don't push on it. And then you are more relaxed and the sound is better and your, your vocal folds are working less hard and that's all really good. So is my top tip for a day when you're tired because mm. it encourages your vocal folds right from the beginning to work really efficiently. And some days we're having a brilliant day and we don't need to do it. But I have a friend, a colleague um, from when I used to work at the University of Huddersfield, um, Tessa Smith Wicker, who did some research into vocal warm-ups. And her research suggests that five minutes of working on mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. these sorts of sounds is worth about 20 minutes of <coughs> in terms of getting increased blood supply and heat to the muscles mm -hmm. and that's why we warm up okay. so physiologically it's a good thing to do anyway it's boring and i want to hear you sing more so that's it so show me Try 
not to let any air into the sound, even on G, F sharp, E, D sharp. <laughs> okay, so just make sure you don't overload those. Okay? Okay. Okay. June. Uh -huh. Okay. Why don't I like O? O? Yeah. Because e? tongue is back, lips are closed. So that means that the sound all stays inside your mouth. I'm doing this for the camera. Okay. So can you cheat for me and keep on the O that you've just sung? Se poi salvo giungin porto. I'm pretty much doing giungin. And it's just O. More O. See if it works. Se poi... Is there any tension in your jaw or your tongue um, at all? A tongue, I don't feel it too good. No, maybe sometimes a little bit in jaw, but I mean, yeah. See if I you can release it, so it a little bit for me and do the same thing. Go back to your natural, what you want to do there. I hear that my position is a little bit higher when I think ooh, like it is more narrow. So you think you're happier I do with it that? Because of that. I like it to be a little bit more ooh. Okay. If that works for you, I mean then you go with that. What I hear is and there's an edge on the A. Which, uh -huh, uh -huh. if I were doing that myself, I would be causing with my jaw and my tongue. And that's why I asked you if there's a thing going on there. Um, I'm not Try again. I'm not sure. Try again. I mean, I don't feel that anything is like stiff. Good. Maybe, I don't know, I'm, I'm not, I don't feel it maybe so much like stiff. Try one yeah. more time. I think when you sing on a closed A, the sound is very, 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 very vibrant. I, th vibrant. I think that is what I'm hearing. I just, uh -huh. I just want you to monitor your tongue route a little bit, just to check there's not anything helping mm -hmm. with the with the low notes. Uh huh. Uh -huh okay. Uh -huh. Think, because okay. if if you're subconsciously searching for more sound as you go lower, it may be that you're recruiting some bits of your apparatus to help with that. That's fine mm. to do that. I'm not going to lie. Tongue compression does make the sound louder down there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's just a question of being aware that you're doing it. And if any notes stick out of the texture as being ever so slightly differently edged to the others, that you round them off and that you let any tongue compression that you're doing go before you go high. Okay. If that makes okay. sense. So I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just saying be aware if you are doing it. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And maybe a gentler way of thinking about these low notes is to think about where the sound is resonating. So for me, I have a band of resonance here for B and above. I feel this very much here. The lower notes, I do feel resonate here more, but I try not to big up that too much by doing stuff. I, it's hard that most of this piece sits in your very, very best well, I imagine you have a very, very, very good, very top range as well. Um, but most of this sits in a very happy. It's just these odd little bits that go low. Mm. I'm just interested in helping you find a focused sound that isn't too... Uh. Too much. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Let's just do it one more time. Just focusing on keep enjoying the resonance here, but not enhancing it. So just let it... Just let it. Just let it. Uh. If you want more sound there... Imagine behind your nose that you are about to sneeze <laughs> and then try and sing. If you were talking, this is what your voice would sound like. Say, se poi salvo, giunge in porto. Can you say it in a silly voice like that? Se poi salvo, giunge in porto. Sing there. Se. Ah, 
it felt like I have, uh, it, it was a little bit darker than I'm used to, and it was, I mean, it, it felt good. Just, um, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I could hear myself inside better. I'm not, I don't know how people hear that, but I could hear myself better. Personally, I thought it was better. I'm going to go further away and do, do, ask you to do it again and listen from further away. Jacob, what did you think? I think there could be too much air on the keys. They just seem to be sticking out. And maybe it's the musical thing of you're sort of rising to the top note. But we probably, I, I'd rather hear the melodic quality of the... Ah, uh -huh, more like that. Yeah, so I... If you like I think that's a very wise thing that you've just said. And I think we're after the same effect, very, very definitely. I'm going to go back, uh, back over here and have a little listen from a little bit further oh. away. But with this sneezy not. feeling, so oh. se poi salvo. Just, um, so where are we? Um, bar 14. Bar 14. do it normally without doing the new thing. Okay. okay, so I want both. <laughs> I want the sneezy thing, but I want bright vowels. Okay, try that. When you sing with the sneeze position, I'm going to call it that because I haven't come up with a better thing to call it, it's more focused in the lower notes. But you were right, it was darker and we lost some vibrancy of the sound. But the vocally it was working more efficiently. When you brightened the vowels, I had everything and that made me really, really happy. Now, in terms of your vowels, you don't have to have the same vowel across your whole range. So. instinct would be as we go lower in pitch we lose high frequencies in the sound that's just physics okay mm -hmm. so we have to come up with a way to balance the voice of putting those high frequencies back in so as we go lower we brighten the vowel a little bit as we go higher we darken the vowel a little bit to balance the voice out in terms of the chiaroscuro in terms of the balance of light and shade because we ideally we want a blade on the front of the sound we want sunlight and we want cream okay so for my voice i would actually because i want to sing this f sharp in my head voice i would sing on a reasonably bright vowel for all of those notes mm -hmm. because I, I i want to be definitely putting up here as opposed to doing it in my middle. Here, I'm a little bit brighter on this note than I am on the E here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Just, I don't want you to change anything you do about these because they're perfect. These are the, the upper, the, the da -da -das, they're perfect. These bottom ones, I think you could think more ah, like cat, as opposed to ah, like uh -huh. ah. cart. Yeah. Ah. Just see if that works for you. It might not, but it mm. might. Okay, good. Could we go from bar 18? Ba 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 dum bum bum. Can you 
you show me a version where it's more like a snake? <laughs> so you have a choice about the coloratura. Because at the moment it's ba -ba 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 -ba, and it's really clever that you can do that. But you don't have to do it the same way all the way through the aria. That's true. <laughs> okay, but that's okay. So this is where we get into the realm of coaching, which is can you try this? I like this idea. And your artistic ideas are absolutely and more valid than mine because this is your performance. Okay, so I just give you suggestions. When you leave the room, you can just go, <coughs> no. Okay. <laughs> same place. <laughs> I really like the brightening note for the vowel on the low notes. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah, do it again. <laughs> fantastic before you start the phrase and I was going to say this right at the beginning and this is a thing that I notice and the reason I say it to you is in case you do recording okay before you sing da you do an n da. can you d I understand why you're doing it and I would do that too can you do it silently and just start the d yeah yeah okay I, I know I do that in, yeah, yeah. I know and I we know. all do it but it it's really obvious when you're recording, and the recording engineers will yell at you about it. So I'm just, yeah, so <laughs> yes, just yes. get out of the habit of doing it now. Okay. <laughs> just before that. Also, I think you're probably, and I don't, as I said, this is the first time we've met. Talk to me about how emotional your breathing is. Do you breathe in the emotion of the character? No. no. <laughs> in which case, breathe a little bit earlier. So mm -hmm. I think your, your breathing's working really, really well. You're not using uh, vastly too much air. You're, you seem to be, have a really healthy body connection and your coloratura is fantastic. This all means you're doing it right. But that time you did go, <gasps> <laughs> and that's not gonna be, give your voice the best chance. So imagine it's like playing golf. You've got to swing up in time to hit the ball. And so give yourself time, if you have time. Yes. <laughs> you I don't mean, have to I take more it, in. Yeah. You say, you, you're brilliant because you don't over-breathe. You don't take in <gasps> this much air. You're really, really disciplined about that. And I think that's great. I just to give yourself a little bit more time. So may, can we have the whole of that? Bum, 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 ba -da -dum. I feel your larynx position is a little bit deep mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that's how you're making the sound bigger and instead mm -hmm. I would be happier if you brought it forward as opposed to uh on it uh. as opposed to uh. Uh -huh, does that uh -huh. make sense? The same A, uh, R is before. Yes, uh, I think so. Uh, yes, yes, yes. It's, yeah, it's more here. I feel yeah. it, yeah. Let's okay, just okay, go okay. for a, let's just go from this up, this mm -hmm. B upbeat. So this is the upbeat to bar 43. If you, can you count her in one, two, three, four for me? Yeah. Just to give her a chance to breathe. Mm -hmm. 
I prefer that, but I've made you sound more like me. Um, that's lazy of me to do that. I, I want the, the lower middle of your voice to be as focused as the upper middle of your voice. And I understand all the things that you're doing in the lower middle bit of your voice, and I used to do them as well. And I then realised that and they're not wrong. Any sound that you can make that doesn't cause you physical discomfort is part of your toolbox of colours. And you might want to use that uh, colour. You absolutely might want to use it. I just don't think it matches up totally with the upper middle of your voice. And I then, I'm disappointed by those notes because the upper middle is so good. That's why I'm saying it. Okay. But if you were singing a low lead, for example, in an intimate setting, absolutely you can make that darker colour. Of course you can, at the Wigmore Hall, absolutely fine. Mm -hmm. Just in this, where it's so vibrant at the top, I don't mm -hmm. want you to change what you do in the upper middle because it's perfect. So it's just a question of finding some different tools for the lower, the lower bit. I think it's great. Interesting. Good. Um, shall we do some lacme? You can try. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Just because you're really good at this already. <laughs> and I'd love to hear you have okay. a go at the Lacme. I mean, yeah, we can try. <laughs> uh, 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 actually, uh, you need to score? Um, or I can quickly maybe? scan it, or yeah. I can look over Jacob's shoulder. That's also possible. Um, um, yeah, because I, I probably yeah. would Yeah, 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 of yeah. course, have yes. your music. Have your yes, music. Yes, yes, OK. Yes, here. You don't mind me looking over your shoulder, do you?
to sing that this early in the morning. I think that's absolutely yeah. amazing. <laughs> Talk to me about how that feels. Oof, difficult. Yeah. <laughs> Especially this last one. Actually, I was okay until this um, ha. I thought it was really good. I felt like but it, it looked was a little like bit here instead yeah, okay. of here, and I wanted to do it piano, and yes. I couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> and so you sensibly did it, mezzo forte, and it sounded like a really good note. So good choice, a good, good choice. Let's have a little work on this. Yes. Um, so one of the things I would say is it's mean of me to ask you to sing this after doing Da Tempesta. <laughs> what, if, what are the tiring things about Da Tempesta? Well, actually, I don't feel tired after Da Tempesta. I feel tired after this. Okay. <laughs> But there are certain things that you have to do oh. in that aria, like the repeated ha 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 ha, which yes. causes your vocal folds a little bit of stress. That's and true. there is no way of doing that without, without. I mean, it's not possible to do it without the repeated articulations because that is the clever right. thing that you're doing. That, however well you do it, is a little bit tiring. Okay, and then to go from that into singing this, which is super super legato, is difficult. Also you are instinctively adjusting your tone. Talk to me about what you think about the Baroque things. What, what colours are you going for there, instinctively? You might not ever have thought about it, but think about it now. Well, actually, I mean, I'm not thinking about it when I do it. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, it's just normal to go a little bit brighter. It is definitely yes. normal. And here it's more, like, vertical, like... Yeah, yeah so, like as somebody who I, I had to personalities as a singer for the beginning of my career. So I had my My Jesus Feliston, ich will ein Kreuzer essen voice, which used to pay my mortgage. <laughs> and then on the side I was learning to do the Mutantalizer <laughs> voice, which is totally different. Yes, it's yes. maybe a little bit more extreme than the difference between these two, but it's basically it's the same thing. So we're going for a creamier, possibly darker colour in this and it's a slightly different setup a slightly different position and that's okay that's what i wanted to say to you it's okay to have more than one setup yes okay yes, 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 yes. and one of the things that we do with early music is we tend to not only sing brighter but we sing with a more vertical setup because we want less vibrato in the sound and yes. for this we want, I don't want to say we want to sing with a lower larynx, actually, because when you're singing very high, you don't want to sing with a lower larynx, but you want to sing with a little bit more laryngeal tilt in this. And mm -hmm. I think that will be the key to getting the very quiet colour that you want on that top B. Mm -hmm. And I'm not promising that it's achievable in one session, but I think we can have a go. Mm -hmm. So this is a good way to practice. So we start with mezzo forte, and for that, we want a nice... Normal opera sound. Don't copy mine because I'm nearly 50 and you are how old? 25. You are 25, <laughs> so don't try and sound like a 50 year old yeah. wobbly woman, okay? Yeah. But if you start this mezzo forte in a nice, efficient vocal setup for opera, it's then easier to do this as a contrast piano, okay? So mm, yes, start yes. confidently without pushing, but confidently, okay? And I want you to just do your lacme sound and go. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's really full on. That's, I would think, at least forte. Uh -huh. Do you think? I think that's really quite... Too much. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. quality in it. Okay. Yeah? Okay. A little bit more crying. Fantastic. So up the volume by 10% for the first and then take it away here yes. by 10%, yeah? Okay. So, <laughs> but better, you do it. <laughs>
notes, it was really, 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 really amazing. Okay, I loved your piano. I felt that the piano, it was a magical sound, but your folds were ever so slightly apart. So I'd prefer the first one to be full contact, and then I don't want you to go off the voice. And by off the voice for the piano, I mean, I, I want the chords to still meet, but just on the thin edges. Now that's hard to ask you to do that. And actually the result will be less magical than you did it. But the magical sound you can do maybe twice in a day. And the reason is because it's drying, because you are passing too much air over the folds. So it's the thing to do on the recording that you make of Lacme, and it's not the thing to do in the rehearsal room when you have to practice this 25 times while they get the lighting right. Do you know what I mean? Yes. So let's just do a really vocally efficient version where you don't go quite so quiet and you keep the sound in contact. Yeah? Okay, okay, so I... <laughs> thinner and whinier uh -huh, uh -huh. but it doesn't do I find that hard because <laughs> I can't do that noise you can do that noise and yours is lovely do you see what I mean but it's <laughs> it's not reliable in the same way okay but what should I do like what should I think to do um, should I just stay in 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 in, in on a podium more or it's as if you're going to make a loud sound and then you don't at the last minute uh -huh, uh -huh. so the if that makes sense. Yes, 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 yes. so i do reduce my airflow i definitely use less air i'm working harder with my body to stop the air escaping is the thing that i would say so Whatever you do to slow your air down, do that more. Uh huh. Uh huh. So, like, think forte, but just yeah. not. <laughs> let's just try that as an idea. Okay. I'm then going to analyze more what I do when I get it right. Okay. Maybe just here before Raletango. It was like it was like on the way to piano, just here, not here. Okay, it sounded piano to us. Okay, it sounded really, really secure and piano to us, which I think is amazing. If you feel there's any tension associated with that sound, can you add into the mix a feeling of you? I'm going to giggle. I'm going to laugh in your throat because uh -huh. that is going to stop anything being tight here. Just a happy, smiley feeling in your throat at the same time. Uh -huh. So like I'm going to laugh in that moment when yeah. I feel... Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a mechanism for stopping any tension creeping into the sound. Try, okay. try, try one okay. more time. Yes, yes, yes. I'm not going to make you do it over and over again, but I just think it's worth experimenting. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> I'm, I'm, getting, I'm, I'm wrong again. I'm Even though it seemed that she was, I'm doing this for the camera, that, that she was really relaxed and that there wasn't any tension going in, there was a tiny little bit. And just that mechanism of the laugh is really helpful. Because if you're about to laugh, you cannot be tight. It's not possible. Yes, so yes, that's yes. fantastic. Now, you don't need to do it as quietly as that. 
but <laughs> if you can and if you can do it every single time and if it feels nice that's fantastic let's carry on that's yes, great yes. it was a really good feeling like i felt a little bit less in my body but i think it was really healthy like yeah up there like just <laughs> this part like yeah so singing should feel easy and pleasurable to do the other thing that's interesting is what you might have felt quite a, a lot of feedback in your body from when you first started to learn this aria you get better at it then you don't feel like you're working so hard and sometimes we are all guilty of going oh no I have to work really hard on this bit and then you work harder and harder and harder and it can actually <laughs> cause tension in your body so yes. broadly speaking with singing and I, I'll go on to I, I'm doing a talk later about um, all sorts of things but um, one of the things I'm going to say to all of you is broadly speaking with singing effort is good but tension is bad and effort very quickly trans forms its way into tension if we're not careful. So if I ask you to, I want you to put your little finger, your, your middle finger on your thumb, and I want you to do the lightest contact you can possibly do. Okay, that's an effort level of one. Now I want you to press as hard as you possibly can. Okay. Has the effort just stayed in your finger? Um, effort is much Because bigger. for me, the effort's in my finger, but it's also in my wrist, it's in my arm, it's in my shoulder, and it's in the back of my neck, and also I'm yes. holding my breath. <laughs> okay? Yeah, true, 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 true. And that's how what can happen with singing, is we're going... It's very, very easy to go from into... <laughs> and it can happen very, very quickly. Yes. Fantastic. Yes, Are we out of time? Oh! Sorry, I could, I, could, I could carry on working with you forever. It's been so much fun. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Thank you very much. Brilliant. I want to give you a round of applause. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. I'm so impressed. <laughs> Thank you.
Hello, everybody. Um, well, welcome to those of you in the room who've come to our open day, and a very warm welcome to those of you watching online with our live stream. Um, we're expecting this to be kind of for an audience of primarily singers and repetiteurs who are interested in their next steps, whether that's coming to the studio or you're discovering and deciding what to do next. You may still be at college, uh, you may not have come through the college route, um, you may be deciding whether to do something next now um, or in a few years' time. Um, we don't know so much, but we hope that this little bit of a, a talk is going to be useful and we'll definitely want to leave time for your questions at the end. Um, so just a brief bit about us. I mean, I'm presuming that you're all here because you've seen um, that we were advertising an open day and that you know a little bit about us. And we've also got brochures and there are e-programs um, online if you would like to get them through our website as well. Um, we are quite unique, actually, um, in, in a way, in, in the sense that we're the only opera studio in the world connected to six opera companies. Um, and you're probably wanting to know how that connection is, because it is quite important. It's not a sort of just a letterhead or, you know, something for us to sort of shout about in, in, in theory, but not have a, a practical element to it. Um, we work with the Royal Opera House, Glyndebourne, English National Opera, Welsh National Opera, Scottish Opera and Opera North. So effectively our kind of main six national companies. Of course, we're well aware that the UK um, opera scene is, is, is far more than those six companies and increasingly, which is great news for you guys. Um, but those are our six formal partners and have been there for what, 47 years, which is how long we've been in existence. Um, so the heads of those companies, the, the general directors or that equivalent, um, they sit on our board. So I report to them, um, David and, and Andrew report to them. I didn't introduce us, did I? Realise that that was the very <laughs> first thing I should have done. <laughs> well, it, yeah, we'll do that in a minute. <coughs> this is what happens when you sit down and you're being, how, giving a countdown to a live stream. I'm Emily, <laughs> I'm the Chief Executive <laughs> of the National Opera Studio, and we'll get everybody to introduce themselves when they, when they start to talk. But um, mm. uh, David and Andrew are very in, involved with um, reporting on our young artists to the board. Um, and if you're... Uh, get a second audition here, which is live at the studio. The second audition, audition is in front of the artistic and musical heads of our partner companies, which makes for a large panel um, of about 15 people. It's a kind of the biggest audition panel you'll probably ever sing to. Um, but they're very supportive and they really um, value our connection and our partnership. Um, there are lots of other programmes out there. When the studio was first in existence, um, we were probably one of the only places that you could study. Um, that isn't the case now, and I think that that means that for you, uh, of people who are kind of deciding on your next steps, there's a kind of richness out there that perhaps there wasn't before. It might be confusing as well, because there's a lot more choice. Um, and I will, might get Rachel to talk a little bit about sort of that and, you know, choices and what you might choose on, on your next steps and why, and perhaps what you decided to do, Rachel. Um, but the kind of, the other thing that's different about us, I suppose, is, is um, we very much um, call young artists young artists here, um, not students. We, we want the kind of mentality to be that it's the mentality of being in an ensemble in the profession and that the preparation is about preparing for the profession and what that looks like. That's much, uh, Andrew will talk a bit more about that and the, the programme and the elements of it, but essentially I think that's what sets us apart, is that we're that sort of gap bef just before you um, hit the profession that will hopefully give you the skills that you need as a rounded artist to sort of fill in all of the musical training and uh, that you've had so far in your career. Um, I'll hand over to David to talk a little bit about the broader work that we do in terms of, like, we've got a lot of different programmes um, running at the moment, haven't we? And perhaps you'd talk to, to us a little bit about all of those, and maybe introduce yourself, which I failed to do. I can do that. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, I'm David Tolkien. I'm Director of Artist Development at the National Opera Studio. And Emily's right. We have, in the past several years, including the COVID years, developed uh, the programs that we run and expanded the reach of the studio to um, work with and develop young singers who don't always come through the conventional or the predicted conservatoire route to us. 
So, um, principally, we've been running a lottery-funded programme called Diverse Voices, which is aimed at reaching people from the global majority and encouraging them uh, to take places uh, in training and on the opera stages of the UK with the right kind of training and the right kind of preparation that means that they are ready to succeed and to aspire to uh, leading roles. We've been working with um, bands of people, people who enjoy singing for the sake of it, people who are developing their singing, people in um, further and higher education, developing uh, and uh, working in undergraduate settings, and people who are at the beginning of their careers looking for ways into refining the skills that have been on offer here, as Emily says, for 47 years, but never quite reaching the broadest community of people who are emerging as singers. Um, one of the features of this programme that I'm particularly proud of is our work with undergraduates of music theatre, introducing them to opera technique and to opera repertoire and looking where the area of similarity of being a music theatre performer and an opera performer exists. And I feel at the moment that it's a bit like a research project. Mm -hmm. We're discovering more and more how that works and what the training requirements might be for people to work in both areas of the profession, where our focus principally for the people that we work with here is employability. You all want to work in the profession, you all want to work busy, but work, want to work and be busy, and it's up to us to help you achieve that by whatever, whatever modern means we might uh, undertake. Thank you, David. Um, and now, Andrew, maybe you'd talk a little bit about the kind of shape of the year on the Global Talent Programme. Um, that would be great. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. In, in brief, because I can talk about this for about half an hour and have done. <laughs> uh, I'll talk about the performance side of it first, perhaps. Um, the sort of the, the, the chief performance part of our year, if you come here, is what we call our residencies, and these are where we go and work with our partner companies. Mm. Uh, and each one of these is a, a fully staged set of scenes. We'll rehearse in here for maybe two or three weeks, and then we'll go to Opera North or Scottish Opera or WNA or ENO or whoever it might be for a week, and we'll rehearse with their staff in their buildings, in their theatres, mm. and with their orchestras. And so our young artists have the chance four times usually during the year to sing with a professional opera orchestra. And it's not just, you know, one day with each orchestra, it'd be three or four days of rehearsal. So there really is a chance to kind of find your feet and blossom and take risks and experiment. And it's one of the great joys of doing my job is watching our young artists do those things and blossom, frankly, mm -hmm. through each project, but also building each project from the last. So that's really a wonderful opportunity. What we don't do here is fully staged operas. If you've come from a music college background, you might be used to doing that. There are lots of reasons we don't, but the chief one is that we want to give everybody an equal opportunity to shine. It's very hard to do that uh, if you're trying to cast an opera because there are a few principal roles and, you know, and all the rest of it. So we think it's much more useful to have done eight or nine or ten different scenes in different languages by different composers and so on with orchestra to be able to do eight or nine or ten different things than do one thing in sort of exquisite depth, which is what you do if you do a fully staged opera. We'll also do each year a set of scenes in here. This year it's in December. Uh, we're doing um, early Baroque and contemporary scenes, and we try each year to do some Baroque music and some contemporary music as well as what you might call a more standard uh, repertoire. Um, as well as those things, we have concerts in here uh, each uh, Wednesday, sorry, once a month on a Wednesday we do a Wandsworth Wednesday concert they're called here and that's a chance for our young artists to curate their own programs that can be song, opera, we really encourage contemporary music, we really encourage um, a diversity of repertoire in those concerts um, we also have master classes and then of course there's absolutely lots of coaching that goes on here if you've come from a college background you might be used to having one or two different coaches who you work with very regularly, here you would work with far more we have four music coaches on staff. We have many more that come in uh, as freelancers. We have wonderful singer coaches like Rachel here. We have wonderful stagecraft coaches, language coaches, uh, people that will talk to you about nutrition, about branding, about uh, pretty much anything you can think of. I'd like to think we're quite holistic about the sort of training we offer. Um, as Emily says, that makes it a slightly different mindset from being a student in a conservatoire. 
there's a bit less of perhaps doing what you're told. There's more of, okay, this person's given me some information. I might find it useful. If I don't, I shall filter it out. You know, if you have coaches, if you have coaches with 10 different people, the chances of them all agreeing with each other are really very small indeed. Hmm. So it's your job to really be an artist and go, okay, this person's useful in this. I'll listen to that. That didn't help me. I'll take that away. Emily has a lovely analogy that we're a bit like a Formula One team. You know, somebody looking after each wheel and then uh, somebody else is doing the fuel and somebody else is, you know, wiping your visor and all the rest of it. Um, so that's just an idea. There is an awful lot going on. Um, it's a very busy year if you come. We always say you get out of it what you put into it. Mm. Thank you, Andrew. That's really good. Um, I want that comes kind of neatly onto onto you, Rachel, because obviously you're with us as a as a um, a coach, um, and it would be really helpful to hear from you about maybe your path, what you see as the kind of n needs of you know young singers today. What what advice you could offer these guys, and perhaps what you see as what we all offer together. Sure. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is is to hold my hands up and say I did not train at the National Opera Studio, and I also want to say. And I wish I had, <laughs> um, for all sorts of reasons. So my path was that I didn't do a music degree. Um, I spent all of my time in the music department of the university where I went to read languages. I now wish that those languages had been German. <laughs> oh, how I wish it was German. No, I studied French. How many French roles do I sing? Zero French roles. So that was really useful. Um, but, but the other part of my degree was in linguistic science, which was very, very full of information about how voices worked. And it uh, consolidated my belief that what I wanted to do was something to do with voices. And if I hadn't still been giving being an opera singer a go 25 years after leaving university, I would have trained as a speech therapist. So that's my interest is in voices and how they work and communication. Um, I then took a year out um, and became a singing teacher. And my qualifications for the job were that I had a car and that I could play the piano. So <laughs> that was very useful. Um, <laughs> and then after that gap year, I carried on being a singing teacher, but I went to the Royal College of Music for five years as a postgraduate. So that, um, and one of those years was as a junior fellow. And at the end of that five years, I felt that I had been in education for a very long time, either as someone who was giving it or uh, at, at the same time, because I've always been a teacher as well as a student and a singer. So I decided I didn't want to do a young artist program. And I went straight into the profession doing initially little roles with big companies mainly Covent Garden. I was very, very lucky. I had a lot of lovely work at Covent Garden as, a, as an emerging singer. And that was amazing. And then Peter Katana had to talk to me and he said, I think you need to go and learn bigger roles with little companies. So I did an enormous amount of work with English Touring Opera. And that's where I learned how to be a singer. That experience was in many ways quite frightening and quite lonely mm. because I was trying to develop my craft and my skills while under the spotlight of some really scary stage lights at the Royal Opera House. And don't get me wrong, the people there were wonderful and I had help. But I think what we do here at the National Opera Studio is we condense my first six years of experience as a pr young professional opera singer and we give people the opportunity to develop all of those skills that took me those six years to develop. I would I say it's about six. But someone is holding your hand the whole way. And it's not just one person. You have people to support you. You have someone helping you work out how to organise your life to be a singer. You have someone advising you on nutrition and how to nourish your body to be a singer. You have... E you have advice on exercise. You have people like me coming in and saying, this is how to be a good colleague. This is what my talk this afternoon is, is mainly about. It's like how to turn up and make friends in the profession by being an excellent colleague. Um, you have the wealth of experience that the resident coaches have, but also, and they will have a duty of care to you for the whole of your time here, but you also have the expertise of people like me who come in a, a few times every year. And one of those people will have the magic little thing, the little nugget that will make all the difference. Mm. And as Andrew says, some of the information you receive while you're here is 
not going to be useful to you now, but it might be useful to you in 20 years' time mm. when you've got something else. And that's why I think it's really important that you choose really carefully the time at which you want to apply to come here. Because you need to be at the stage where you are a young professional artist who's able to take what is useful and store what's not useful at the moment for another time. And it is very much a question of you're not being told what to do. You are using us as a resource to enhance what you do already. Mm. And I think that's what we do really, really well. And the, the word that I keep coming back to with the experience that the young artists have here is holistic. And I think it's so important. Music colleges are getting so much better at this too. Mm. We're having lots of experts coming into music colleges. Some, sometimes that's me as well. I do mm. that in, in some of the music colleges. Um, and I think that's absolutely great. I think what we have here is such a supportive, environment where the duty of care is taken so so seriously and i'm not saying that the other places don't do that mm. i don't have experience of all of those other places i can say we do it really well here mm. thank you rachel <laughs> that's really helpful and brings me on to the kind of what what you said about being a good colleague which i think also leads on from something andrew said which is that when we take our artists up to the companies actually that's some sometimes the most important thing that they're looking for is it's less important what people are singing but how they are performing with their colleagues um, the variety of, of things that they can showcase on the stage but crucially off the stage too because what you have to understand is that the companies are looking to be able to say will this person be able to kind of be in the back of a, of a very small minibus with four other people on tour of the Scottish Highlands or you know will this person mind if the schedule changes at the last minute or if they're asked to be on stage the whole time when they're only singing one line that's the sort of thing that you're going to need to think about when you're um, when you're a professional um, and it brought me nicely to two questions I have for, for David and then Andrew one David, is, is the kind of nature of the ensemble and how important that is. Um, perhaps a bit about uh, Clearner, who is the one that you, you haven't... One of the coachings we didn't open up today was, um, was our elite performance coach because it's, it's very personal what she's doing down there, but perhaps you could talk about her and also about the particularly the stagecraft offer because I think we try to do... We're, we're trying very hard to really equalise the music and stagecraft offer because we believe it's so important. Yes. Um, which one first? Uh, whichever you like. <laughs> I asked you three questions, I think, sorry. <laughs> uh, so, um, one of the big issues for all artists, performing artists, um, dancers, singers, actors, is that you are the product, you are on view, and you are yourself an interpreter of roles. Um, and, of course, that entails a great deal of confidence, but also we have to recognize an awful lot of self-doubt. So we work on uh, resilience here, how to become the best artist you can, and leave behind, if possible, all those self-doubts which are not helpful. And to do that, we have recently been working with an extraordinary woman called Cleana O'Connor from Ireland, who is the principal coach, I have to go slowly to get the words in the right order, for the Irish women's Olympic hockey team. She also has got a degree in music. Um, and when she began working with us, she said, mm, I'm not sure I can help because opera singing is about singing as a soloist on your own, an aria. And I said, well, that might be the case sometimes, but it's also about teamwork and how you work together. And as Emily said, how you perform together and relate even when you're not on the stage, mm. when you're in a bus, when you're traveling on a train, when you're working and you're tired, but you know, having to respect not only other artists on the stage, but the person who helps you with your wigs and makeup, the stage doorman who might help you find a way home in the rain with a new umbrella, that kind of thing. <laughs> um, um, and for us, moving on to stagecraft and our stagecraft offer, we, we are proud to encourage young singers to consider themselves to be actors and singers. Because those two skills, if you really diminish one of them, if you diminish the singing, 
you would be an actor, wouldn't you? <laughs> but actually, with the singing, you need to be an actor as well. So we spend a lot of time not only in the studio practicing this, but conceiving what good acting um, on the opera stage really looks like. Um, and I think that's a really satisfactory and innovative way to proceed. Because early on in your training, I think that <coughs> your ability to act and understanding the art of acting needs to be really intense for you to be ultimately mm. successful. And one other thing I'd em e e emphasize, Emily, is that we have people at the studio who come to us on our Global Talent Programme from a multiple range of nationalities. Not, o not all of them German, French and Italian, but come from languages that are not usually represented on the opera stage. And during your training with us, we want you and require you and encourage you to sing in your native language, whether that's a folk song, an aria, but something that really represents you and the language uh, which is your mother mm. tongue. That's great. Thank you, David. Um, before we get on to questions, Andrew, would you talk a bit about repetiteurs? Yes, thank you. I was going to ask if I could do that. <laughs> I'm very conscious we talk a lot about singing and not very much about uh, repetiteurs in these sessions. The reps in this building are absolutely the foundation of everything we do. Um, most of the things we do just cannot happen without our repetiteurs. They are not here as some sort of cheap labour. We give them, I think, an extremely good and well-rounded training. I myself trained here. It's one of the best decisions I ever made. Um, so what you will do if you come here as a repetiteur, of course, play for a lot of rehearsals. You'll play for a lot of coachings. You'll have the chance to absorb from the coaches that come, the language coaches, mm -hmm. the music coaches, the singing coaches. But you'll also have a lot of one-on-one -on -one coaching of your own. Um, you will have uh, group classes where we will talk about uh, you know, how to play audition repertoire, that what the pitfalls are. We'll have a session with harpsichords where we talk about how to play seco restative. We'll talk about conducting. We'll talk about how to coach a singer, the sorts of things you should be listening for, and give you the chance to try that out in a sort of supportive environment. So we might do, for example, guided coaching. We'll say, hey, coach the singer for 20 minutes, Somebody will sit in the corner and we'll have a chat about how that went afterwards and so on. And the other thing you do is meet an awful lot of useful people. This is true of singers as, as well, of course. But so many of the heads of music and the important people from the various companies will come and coach here. And meeting those people can be really beneficial for your career. So I, I do think it's a really wonderful um, offering that we have for our reps. Great. But, but it, we, it's worth saying, Andrew, too, that we encourage the reps to take part in the stage training too, mm. because they're stage animals as well. Yeah. Um, and it's really revealing and encouraging to see how this influenced their works as reps. Thank you. Um, just some real practicalities, and then I think we'll open the floor to questions. Um, one thing that I think has become very clear to us in the last um, few years, especially probably since COVID and there have been a lot of changes in the UK landscape um, and lots of young artists are considering their options, not just dependent on where they're going to get the best training from, but who's going to give them money. And we really recognise that. That's something that's changed over the last um, few years. And I think we have to respond to that. We have always offered bursary support to those who need it. Um, we've changed that now so that we offer everyone a performance stipend of £650 a month. Um, for all the months that you're here, that's nine months. And we offer additional support for those who, who need it in terms of their upkeep and, and accommodation support. Um, we also have a singing lesson fund. One thing we didn't say here, um, but that we, is, and Rachel knows very well, we don't offer singing lessons, technical singing lessons. We encourage people to stay with their teachers or to find new teachers if they want to kind of branch out from their current ones. Um, and we offer um, £200 a term for support towards those singing lessons that may be external. Um, that may not exactly cover all the singing lessons, but we hope that it's a, a, a start. And, and, the same for reps. and the same for reps. And you can, the reps can use it for language coaching, la language classes or piano lessons. Um, and then we also have an auditions travel fund that will enable our young artists to each have a, a, a chunk of money to, to go for auditions. So it's, it's just a little thing that helps, and we recognise it as also a deciding factor in, in many ways. Um, 
Also, the, another practical thing is auditions, if you are considering applying, open on the 1st of November, so that's not far away. But any more information, all the questions that you might have about auditions are, should be on our website. But I think, since we've only got 10 minutes or so, would anyone have a question for a, any of us? And don't feel frightened. Nothing's a stupid question. <laughs> yeah. That's a really good question. Um, the question for those at home, preferable to have done an opera school before applying to NOS. I think the short answer is not necessarily. Um, everyone comes from different routes. Certainly the people who come to us from abroad, there aren't really opera schools at the conservatoires. You know, they're just, they don't really exist. In fact, I think that the UK training is considered really very good because we've got all these fantastic opera schools. Um, I, we do not... Uh, it doesn't matter to us. We don't have an upper age limit. We often have people coming to us who have been through opera school. We sometimes have, we often have people who, who don't. I don't know whether it's, I mean, it, it will have changed. But um, what do you think, Rachel, as, as, a, as a singer and as an artist? I think everybody is unique, is what I think. And what's the right route for one person is not always an opportunity available to another person. And what I would say we do here is we meet people where they actually are as opposed to saying you must have jumped through the following things in order to be good enough mm -hmm. to be with us so if we think that you're a good fit for us and we feel that we can really offer you an opportunity that is going to springboard you into where you want to be we will make sure that you're looked after if you are potentially a little bit less experienced on the opera stage than some other people. Mm. I would say um, we try to tailor your experience to be right for you. Mm. So I wouldn't be discouraged from applying by not having done an opera school. Yeah. And we often have people come to us who uh, have been working in different disciplines, for example, for, you know, we've had people come to us who've been working for eight years in a completely different discipline um, and then come to opera late. Um, we've had people who have, of course, done the traditional sort of seven years in, in opera school, in, in music college, which probably feels like quite a long time. <laughs> um, you know, you can be a doctor by that time. Um, but I think, again, yeah, I really agree with what Rachel said. I'd also say that when, when you apply, you'll submit your CV. The first round of the auditions is a video round, and we do not look at the CVs mm -hmm. at that point. So we'll look at CVs when you get to your second round. But the decisions we make about the first round are not based on any training that you've had. They're simply based on the video submissions that you make. So if we think you're, you're, you, you, we should hear you in live in the second round, that'll just be based on how you sound, not on whether you've done an opera course or not. That's really good to know. Mm. Yeah. And it, it, I think the important thing to say is that the, the, the other thing that's really changed in the last um, few years, and certainly since COVID, is it is really important that, that you um, get good videos in. That doesn't mean you have to hire very expensive recording equipment, um, but it is these days, I mean, musical theater courses and, and people have been doing this forever. You always have to self-tape. Every single time they do an audition, you have to run into a room, do a self-tape, off you go. And I think opera, um, us opera people have to get with the program. Um, so get used to being in front of the camera, uh, whether you like it or not. Away. It isn't going away. No. No. But we have made it a little bit easier this year, and I think we have to produce now two videos this year. It has been three or four in previous years, so a maximum of two is a little bit less time to spend doing it. Yeah. Any other questions? Have you enjoyed watching your coachings today? Has it been useful for you? And may I ask, and if, is there anyone in this room um, thinking of applying either now or in the future? Yeah, okay, great. I mean, it, it's really, it's, it's really uh, interesting for us because we are very mindful that there are so many options out there and that you are sitting here thinking, is this option right? And the, honestly, the answer is that's really up to you. We, we can't, ta we, d we don't know you, um, you know, there are people who really want to either come or stay in the UK and make their career, this their home, and, uh, and, and go forth into the world from here, in which case a UK-based training programme is a good thing. There are people who are desperate to kind of either leave the UK or, or go somewhere like Germany, where you've got a lot of young artist programmes at, um, 
at the opera houses, uh, not just in Germany, but all, all around the world. Um, they're offered different things. You know, the difference between us and our partnerships with the six companies is that we kind of, we have the opportunity to, to, to give artists the connections with those six companies and beyond. Of course, we have agents days and we invite international um, artists as well and international casting directors. Um, if you are uh, choosing a young artist program at an opera house, depending on where you, where you go, you'll probably do small roles and covers at that opera house, get some training in, in place, and that may be the best thing for you. So we can't sit here and say, you should definitely come here or you should definitely apply here. We're hoping that the information that we give you will be enough for you to go away and say, that sounds like it's for me, or, oh my God, no, I think, <laughs> I'll, <laughs> I think I'll do something else. Is there anything else that you'd like to say or any, any more questions from the floor? Great. Okay, well, look, I just want to say then thank you very much on the live stream for, for listening and watching. I hope it's been useful to some of you, either singers or repetitors, considering your next steps. Thank you very much for coming, and uh, we hope you've enjoyed your day. Bye-bye. That's it.